If you're like me, you grew up learning that math and language are two very different subjects. I wonder, to what extent is that true? Research has shown that children with language difficulties often struggle in math as well. A 2018 study looking at children with specific learning disorders in mathematics showed that about half of them also had some form of language or communication difficulty. Another longitudinal study revealed that children who had developmental language disorder also had delayed number skills development and that these children fell further behind in their number skills over time. Many more studies have yielded similar results. But if math and language are such different subjects, how do we explain all of these findings? Maybe these subjects are more similar than we think. Both language and math require our brains to carry out certain functions, like paying attention to relevant information or remembering certain concepts and then applying them to new information. These are called executive functions. Certain aspects of these subjects are even more similar. Let's now consider reading and number processing. This is called the dual route to word reading. It is a model that shows how we read. I'll describe it quickly. The model outlines three domains, orthography, phonology, and semantics. Orthography refers to letters and their shapes. Phonology is a fancy term for sounds and how our brains organize them. And semantics refers to the meanings of words. For example, knowing that the word dog refers to a four-legged creature that lots of people have as pets. Researchers believe that people read using two main strategies, either by decoding or by using a process called lexical lookup. Decoding is when our brain connects orthographic symbols or letters to their sounds. It's what children do when they are sounding out a word and is used when children are first learning to read. Lexical lookup is when someone sees a word and knows exactly what it is without needing to sound it out. It is more automatic and it's what skilled readers do. Decoders also get to the meanings of words but only after decoding their letters and then matching their sounds to known meanings. And that was your one minute overview of how we read. Now, let's turn our attention to number processing. This is what a researcher named Dehane calls the triple code model of number processing. In this model, there are also three domains but these domains refer to numbers rather than to words. The domains of this model are the analog code, Arabic code, and verbal code. The analog code is a visual representation of a number. So these five lines, for example, are the analog representation of the number five. The Arabic code refers to the symbols we use to represent numbers. This is the symbol for the number five. Finally, the verbal code refers to the words we use to represent numbers. We use the word five to verbally represent that concept. Now, when we compare these models side by side, do you see any similarities between them? Both reading and number processing require our brains to represent concepts using three different domains. They also require our brains to become comfortable translating information from one domain into another. These similarities suggest that when reading and when working with numbers, our brains are actually working in very similar ways. So, what does this all mean? A number of experts believe that many children who have a language impairment also struggle in math because of how their language impairment impedes their communication. However, given what we have just explored, there may be some impaired underlying brain functions causing issues in both subjects. This especially may be the case for children who struggle with reading and with number processing. Why does this information matter? 
First, it means that those working in special education should not let diagnostic categories box them in. Diagnoses are helpful, but are not meant to limit the help given to students. Next, this information opens up new ideas for how we teach. Educators could maybe use ideas from how students read when teaching math and vice versa. Finally, if you struggle with both reading and math, understand that these are not necessarily distinct subjects. Some of the same strategies could help you with both. Now, let's go back to the question that we started with. Are math and reading as different as we think? The answer is no. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you.